Ah, uh, why hello there. You're here to learn about how go-karting all started. Well, our story begins back in the 1950s, across the pond in California, at a racing company called Curtis Craft. They were known for building race cars in the Indy 500, midget cars for dirt oval tracks, and even made an entry into Formula One. But the less said about that, the better. Now, working at Curtis Craft was a fabricator named Art Ingalls. Now, at the time, the company McCulloch was known for its chainsaws and motors and just released a new line of lawn mowers. But unfortunately for them, they were hit with hundreds of complaints. This then resulted in a massive recall and being left with around 8,000 motors left on the shop floor. The warehouse where these were stored were close to Curtis Craft, so one day Art went across and brought one for 25 bucks and started building what is now known as the Cart 1, a small tubeless chassis with the motor only powering one wheel using a bike chain. He then got a visit from Duffy Livingstone, who needed some work done onto his sports car. And whilst at the garage, he spotted a little cart. He then asked Art if he could build the exact same using the same motor, and Art agreed. Duffy went away and made a few of his own along with his partner Roy Desbro. After three were built, they all took them down to the famous Rose Bowl, driving around its car park and even pulling off some tricks and having fun. News spread fast about the little carts and started to build crowds, but unfortunately for them, every place they would turn up to, they get shut down for noise complaints, but they were still asked where they could buy one themselves. And so in 1957, Duffy Livingston, Roy Desbro, and Bill Rowles formed the Go-Kart Manufacturing Company, selling make yourself Go-Kart kits for $129. Art, who was still working at Curtis Craft, tried to convince his boss that he should open up a Go-Kart Manufacturing division in the business, but he failed. So in 1958, he quit his job and opened up the Ingalls and Beretti Kart Company, making completed karts rather than kit versions Duffy was making. And so the karting craze began, but they still had the issue of getting kicked out by local authorities. So a friend of there's Don Broderick, who was a racer, mechanic, and attorney, said, to keep from getting kicked out of these parking lots, we've got to form our own club and get our own insurance, as well as making regulations that can govern the competitions in future. And so the Go-Kart Club of America was born with its own home for racing, with rules and regulations patterned along with official races on properly made tracks. From then on, it became a worldwide phenomenon, with the UK getting its first taste of karting back in 1958, thanks to the help of Sergeant Mickey Flynn of the US Air Force. He spotted the advert for an American magazine and called up Duffy to have five carts to be flown overseas, to have at race meetings for his US airmen at Burnton Wood in the UK. The craze, much like in America, spread fast in England, going from airbase to airbase. As ordering these carts overseas was tricky for UK citizens, in 1959, Aubrey Layton famously created the Yellow Peril, the first British-built go-kart. With a Villa's 90 engine and gearbox, brakes made up of metal clamping around the axle, thin general jumbo tyres, and a big steering wheel for extra fun. The first official UK race was held in 1959 at RAF Lake and Heath. Albee's creations claimed victory against the American-made carts and was won by none other than the great Graham Hill. Soon after, more and more dedicated manufacturers started making more consumer carts, either assembled in kits or as separate pieces to build up their own carts over time at home. What more does a boy want to do than sit in it and see what it feels like? Even as he does so, he's looking ahead. Thinking about buying a cart? McCulloch opens up a new era in karting. Ah, uh, 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 not yet. It was around this time karting became more serious, with countries having their own governing bodies and even having publications talking about the sport. And in 1964, the Commission Internationale de Karting, the governing body for karting in France, held the first official championship in Rome at Pista de Lore. 19 drivers from across the world competed and it was Guido Sala from Italy taking victory in his 100cc kart. Karting was now seen as a true sport and started becoming the gateway for up and coming drivers to break into the motorsport world, such like the 1977 South American kart champion Ayrton Senna and 1984 German junior kart champion Michael Schumacher. The 90s brought the popularity of indoor go-kart tracks to light, where customers could arrive and drive on slower but safer designed karts at places like Daytona in 1990 and Team Sport in 1992. Also seeing companies like BizCarts forming in 1994, dedicated to making carts specifically for outdoor and indoor tracks, which were built for maximum efficiency with barriers around the carts, interchangeable seats, and now moving into the modern era, becoming fully electric and having their speed controlled remotely for a safer experience. And so that is the story of how go-karting first started from taking old lawnmower engines and transforming them into racing machines. Now this video was made possible by the guys over at Viewpoint Videos and what I love about these guys is that their whole product is about sharing your go-kart experience. The link to 45 go-kart tracks including all of Team Sport karting locations where you arrive at a track, pay a fee and have your sessions filmed on a helmet mounted camera. It's a fantastic automated service so if you're going to a track soon make sure to check them out. But that's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did make sure to leave a like down below. If you want to see some more go-karting videos you can do so by clicking over here and if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel you can click up there. Make sure to follow me on Twitter, first link in the description down below. But thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.